Welcome everyone to the Sunday morning service at Beacon of Hope Ministries in Clearwater, Florida. I'm Pastor Marsha McAllister. My wonderful associate pastor Jim Ellsbury was here last week. I was in Indiana. I was blessed to be able to perform the ceremony for my grandson Justin and his bride Cammy, who are now married. And uh, we had quite a weekend. Uh, just a lot of fun going on all week long, all weekend long. Actually, more like more than five or six days. So much going on all the time. And I just thank God for all that. And, um, and him getting me home safely, uh, even though I drove straight through by myself on Tuesday, 17 hours. How about all right. that? All right. Is that crazy or what? Woo! But I did. So, home safely. Glad to be back. First Samuel chapter 3. Our series is Practicing His Presence. We've been doing that at Beacon of Hope this morning. I wish you Facebook people could have been with us because it was a powerful morning with the presence of the Lord here in an amazing, wonderful, refreshing for all of us. First Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was attending to the service of the Lord under the supervision of Eli. Some of you might remember I was talking about Samuel a couple weeks ago, that his mother, y'all remember his mother? What was her name? Hannah. Hannah. Uh, Couldn't have any children. Remember? Uh, his dad, Elkanah, had two wives. So Penina was the other one, and she was having all kinds of kids, and Hannah wasn't. And Hannah cried out to the Lord. Do you remember that? Go back two weeks ago and pick up if you were not, if you didn't hear that. And so what Hannah said to God was, if you will just give me a child, a son, she was specific, I'll dedicate him to you all his life. I'll give him to you. And so what that meant in that tradition was that she took him, little Samuel, because she did get pregnant soon after that prayer, she took little Samuel to the temple in Jerusalem, and Eli, the priest, basically raised Samuel. From the time he was at least three years old, old older. A lot of commentaries say he's three or four. Someplace in there, he lived with Eli. Okay? Now, um, it says here, the verse I just read in 1 Samuel 3, there wasn't a lot of visions and revelations going on in that day. It's like God was kind of quiet. It wasn't moving. Okay? But at that time, let's go down to verse 3 of 1 Samuel 3. The oil lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord. Look where Samuel was sleeping, where the ark of God was. Do you know you can sleep in God's presence every single night? Yes. yes. Right? Did you, just like Samuel was? Samuel was sleeping in God's presence. You can. Every night, You as you lay yourself down, as I lay me down to sleep, right? Pray the Lord my soul to keep. Yes. Uh, and Sam, that's where Samuel was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here I am. Yeah. Now the title of this is, here am I, because that's what God dropped in my heart three or four days ago. Here am I. And as I began to go back to this, I knew this was the scripture, it's here I am. <laughs> but there's a reason why it's here am I, because Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, where we're not going to go to right now, Isaiah is called of God, and God, and he says to God, here am I. Okay? Do you know that God knows right where you are? Yeah. Amen. Okay? And so Samuel's lying there, and Samuel hears this voice, and he goes, here I am, or here am I. And he ran to Eli, and he said to the priest, because he's in another bedroom, here I am, for you called me. Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and laid down. <laughs> many, many years ago, 40-some, can't remember how old my nephew is, 40-some, well, 46, same age as my daughter. Uh, my sister Jan had just taught this scripture to Jason. He was like three. And so he was playing with his toys in a part of the house, and she said, where are you? Where are you? And in, he had just remembered this. So this little guy goes, here am I, and yelled it out. And she goes, what? He said, yes, here am I. And he finished with the rest of this, which is what Samuel says in verse 9. Speak, Mom, for your servant hears me. Wow. <laughs> I'm 
mean, he remembered what God had taught him through his mom. So here I am. Speak. Speak, mom. For your servant hears. Right? So we've always laughed about that because he took that scripture and just applied it to his own life. Here's Samuel. Three times God comes. Three times. Three is a, a significant number in the word of God. It's the fullness of God. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He calls three times, right? But Eli does not, he just says, oh, go back to bed. I didn't call you. Go back to bed, right? <laughs> Do you know there's a lot of people that when you say, God has spoken to me, they go, ah, yeah, I'm well, not sure. Right, why? Because they're not in tune with the voice of God and they just don't believe God could be speaking, right? Can God speak to you yes. right now in this sermon, for instance? Yes. yes. Can he speak to you in the middle of the night, wake yeah. you up with some yeah. song on your heart? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And so Samuel, uh, the Lord calls again. He goes and Eli says, I didn't call you. Go lay down. Right. Now Samuel yet did not know a personal experience with God. Sometimes God gets a hold of people that are not in relationship with him. Okay. Something happens and suddenly they realize God is real. I need God in my life right sometimes these things happen and when they do it's like whoa it could be a wake up come to jesus meeting for somebody right this is what happened here samuel didn't have it says in verse 7 of first samuel 3 he didn't have a real personal relationship with god yet okay this is the beginning okay so the lord called samuel a third time verse 8 and he stood and he went to eli and he said here i am for you did call me. Yeah, you did. Now I've heard it three times. So Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. It shall be that if he calls you, you shall say. If he calls you. Now Eli had a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Didn't discipline his sons, all kinds of things. His, his priestly line was cut off because of all his problems. But this he knew. He knew the voice of God, okay? And so he says, if he talks to you, if he calls you, here's what you're to say. Verse 9, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you don't get anything else out of today's sermon, get that. Here's what God says to us today. Speak, Lord. He reminds us we should say to him, Lord, I want to hear what you have to say. Too many people don't want to hear what God has to say. You know why? A lot of times they say, I don't have time for that. Right now, God can't speak to people. In all my years of pastoring, 40-some years, I have heard this over and over again. God does not talk to people, I've heard people say. Oh, yeah, you do. And I've said, yeah, you, you know do. what? Yeah, you do. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he do, Miss G. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Okay? He speaks to us. Amen. And he walks with me. And he talks, talks to me, and he tells me I am his own, yes. and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Don't you love that old yes. song in the garden? Oh, I love it. And he walks with me, he talks to me, and he tells me what? You're mine. You're mine. At the end of the uh, wedding, <laughs> the other day, it was a beautiful wedding, and Cammy and Justin are facing each other, as I have them do in weddings, and they're holding hands, and they're looking at each other, and, and it was just so beautiful. And then I, I was pronouncing a blessing over them, and then God said to say this, and this is what I said. Grandson, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> and the whole place just... Yay! You know, a lot of them probably didn't even realize it was his grandmother. But at that point, I just felt, grandson, you're mine. You're my flesh and blood. Yes. You can kiss right. your bride. You know what God says to us? Child, you're mine. You belong to me. Right? Yes. You belong to me. Whoa. Then the Lord came and stood. Ah, now God's getting really serious here. Verse 10. God comes and stands and he calls as he did the previous time. Samuel! I think he probably
probably was more like Samuel. Yeah. Samuel. Yeah. I don't think it was real loud. Then Samuel answered, mm -hmm. Speak, for your servant is listening. Is listening. <laughs> Speak, for your servant is listening. <laughs> then God gave him a big message to tell Eli. And it wasn't a happy message. It was a message, your line is going to be cut off. You have not taken care of your son, your sons and all the evil they have done. Therefore, they, your priestly line is, is going to be over with you, Eli. Your sons are going to die on the same day. He told him all the stuff. And here's a little guy. We don't know how old Samuel was. But here's Samuel having delivered this message to Eli the priest. And Eli comes in and he goes, I know God talked to you. What did he say? No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And Eli had enough of God in him to say, you know what? Tell me. I want to hear. And then in verse 18 of 1 Samuel 3, so Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And Eli right. said, it is the Lord. May he do what seems good to him. Amen. Okay? And then the Lord continued to appear in Shiloh. For in verse 21, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. How did God reveal himself to by Samuel? The word, by the word. By the word. Now, if you take notes, write down a few things. I don't have them written down, but I have them in my heart. You know how reveal, God reveals himself to us and talks to us so many yeah. times? Well, Through his word. Yeah. What happens? You hear a scripture, a sermon. You hear something, and it just that scripture is just in your heart. It resonates. Right? It resonates in you. Right? Um, or somebody, you just open your Bible. Here's another way it happens. Yeah, yeah. You just open your Bible, sometimes randomly, and you go, oh, wow. Okay, right now. Oh, I've got that marked. What does that say? Right. What does that say? Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Uh, you know what I just turned to? I'm just going to read it because this yeah. is God. This is Ecclesiastes 3.11. This is what I just turned to when I said that. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. Okay. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've been doing this kind of stuff all morning long. Yeah. So I'm not surprised this is happening right now because he has, hasn't he? Yes. He's been since, even before the service started. A sense of divine purpose. You have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what the devil like tries to tell you? You're a nobody. You are never going to amount to anything. Nobody even notices that you're a, a Christian. Nobody cares. You're not, you don't have any purpose. Why could you think you have a purpose? You have no purpose. The devil is good at doing that, guys. This is God. Here we go. We're going with it. It's Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing. I'm in the Amplified Bible. It is a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Amen. Guys, he's planted that in your heart. That's Ecclesiastes 3.11. He's planted it in your heart. Nothing can satisfy but God. Amen. Nothing. Hmm. That little song that I sang Wednesday night at Bible study, I woke up in the night again last night singing it. I don't know who it's for, but I know it's for me. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. You know what? Jesus belongs to you. You belong to him. Amen. What? Is it for just a minute or two? No. It's for eternity. It's for eternity. That's what it's for. For eternity. Okay. Verse 11 of Ecclesiastes 3. It's a, it's a sense of divine purpose in your human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Nothing else can satisfy except God. Okay? Yet man cannot find out or comprehend or grasp what God has done. From the beginning to the end. We don't understand that, but God's put that within our hearts, that divine purpose. Now Amen. we're going to John chapter 10. Go back there, please. Okay? Uh, John chapter 10. Let's go there. Let's see what Jesus has to say about all this. Okay? I love this scripture. Let's start with hmm, verse 
3 of John chapter 10. The doorkeeper opens the gate. Uh, while you're getting there, I'm going to tell you what happened to Samuel. He became a priest. He became an amazing prophet of God. God moved mightily in his life. That's a story for another day. Here's what happened that day that we just talked about. Samuel said, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Okay? Is that what God's wanting to say to all of us right now? Yes. Amen. All right, so let's go to John chapter 10, verse 3. The doorkeeper opens the gate for this man. And this man is Jesus, by the way. And the sheep hear his voice. Now, if you want mark in your Bible, mark that down. The sheep hear God's voice. The sheep hear his voice. Okay? And they pay attention to it. I'm in the Amplified for a reason. Sheep hear his voice and they pay attention. Okay? And knowing that they listen, okay, God knows we listen. You're listening right now, Facebook, here in the room, uh, Zoom. You're all listening. And knowing that they listen, he calls his own sheep, what? Uh, I don't know what your name is, but you over there in the back corner. Oh, no, by name. By name. Oh, 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 by name? By name. He calls them by name and leads them out to pasture. Hang on to that thought, and let's go to verse 4. When he has brought all his own sheep outside, he walks on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice and they recognize his call. Okay? If you are one of these today, Facebook or wherever you are, that says, I didn't know that God could speak to me, here's the answer. Yes, he can. And not only that, he knows you inside and out. Now, that can be good news or bad news, right? He knows you. He knows all the junk you're dealing with. He knows all the stuff that's going on in your life. He knows you by name. He knows you. Okay? Ah. Uh, Jesus says in verse 7, I am the door for the sheep leading to life. This is one of the seven I am statements. All of the I am statements that Jesus said are in the book of John. There are seven of, of them. There's one of them, I am the door. Another one, I am the vine. Yes. Remember, you are the branches. Here's another one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6 is that one. Sure. John 8, 12. We're going to get to that one, Miss G, in just a minute. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Yes. Remember that? Yes. John chapter 5, I forget the verse, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Chapter 11, chapter 11 uh, uh, John 11, for I am the resurrection and the life. Um, help me, PJ, what am I forgetting? Door, and Miss G just said shepherd, we're going to that one. Way the truth and life. I said that. Bread of life. Bread of life. Yeah. Light of the world. Yes. That should be a seven. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus says here in John chapter 10, he reveals two of his I am statements yeah. about who he is. He says, I'm the door. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get to heaven? You're going to get to heaven through the door. Right? And that's why he talks about it in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth. The truth and the life, and then he goes on in John 14, 6, and says, no man comes to the Father but by me. That's right. Okay? There's no other way, guys. There's no other way. I am the door leading to life. Go down to verse 9 of John 10. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. Yes. And will live forever. Yes. Whoa. When we did our Heaven series, we talked about these verse, this verse and John 10 last year. Because without the, the way to get in, you, if you can't get into something, what are you going to do? You're a mess, right? Yeah. You ever locked your keys in your car? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Well, how do you get in without a locksmith or somebody that can open it, right? Uh, when we so often do our own thing, we're out on the path and we're just doing whatever we're doing, whatever, right? We are not realizing how much we need this good shepherd. Right? To corral us back in. The people that have studied sheep, <laughs> sheep tend to run away and do their own thing. Right? They need a, a follow. They need to follow. Sheep need to follow. Look at verse 9. I am the door. This is John chapter 10, verse 9. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever. I'm in the Amplified for a reason. As we studied in our Heaven series, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever. Amen. Is that good news today or is that good news? Yeah. And will go in and out free.
really in fine pasture, uh, and that is spiritual security. Okay? Now, John 10.10 10 is a verse you heard me quote uh, probably most sermons I quote this. I don't know why, because it just applies all the time. I guess I do know why. The thief, which is the devil, comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. What does the devil want to do in your life? He wants to constantly harass you. He wants to steal your joy. He wants yes. to steal your peace. He wants to steal your health. Yes. He wants to steal your finances. Can anybody say, yeah, I agree. Yeah. He wants to yeah. kill you. Yeah. You ever had some, some bad stuff happen physically or almost in a wreck? He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your witness. This is what the Jesus is saying. This is the thief. Look out for him. Don't let him steal from you. Don't let him steal from you. How many people have security things on their homes? A lot of people, right? Why? So that no thief can come in and steal, right? And so Jesus said, I came that you will have and enjoy life. Have life and enjoy life. How many people want to enjoy life? Right. It's better than just having life, isn't it? Don't you want to enjoy every day? Now, are there days that are harder than others? Yeah. But you know what? Jesus said, I came that you can have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. This is the Amplified. Have it in abundance. Here's the rest of that verse. To the full. Till it overflows. Praise God. To the full. Praise God. God doesn't want you just to exist, guys. Amen. He wants you to realize he wants to talk to you. Amen. Have a relationship with you. When you have a relationship with with somebody and you are sitting down and you're talking and you're listening and you're talking and you're listening and you're talking and you're listening, right? I heard somebody say the other day, the most important part of a conversation is what you listen, how you listen. It's not what you say, it's what you hear, okay? Why? Because human nature is thinking ahead about what we're going to say in response to what we just heard, right? Right? Now, God says, I want you to enjoy life. I want you to take it moment by moment and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Look at verse 11 of John 10. I am the good shepherd. There's another one of his I am's. I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my own life for the sheep. Go over to verse 27 of John 10. The sheep, verse 27, that are my own, hear my voice. Now, how do you know if you're God's? If you've received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you said, have said, Lord, come into my heart. Come and live in me. I, I you know, I, I want to be your child. That's why that song has just hit me hard this week. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone. Not for just here, but for eternity. You're his if you've asked him into your heart. Verse 27, the sheep that are my own, hear my voice. Don't ever say, God doesn't speak to me. Right. Right. Okay, let's go back to some of the ways we were just talking about it. God can speak to you through a sermon, right. something that hits you. He can speak to you through a verse that comes alive to you, right? Mm -hmm. He can speak to you in praise and worship. Yes, That's right. I tell you, he was speaking to us today in praise and worship. I mean, it was powerful, right? Yes. And I mean, all around the room, there were praises. When I came in from praying and got in here, there was a group of you that were absolutely tearing it up with the blood songs, weren't you? You were just praying and, and shouting. And I mean, all heaven started coming down right here at the beginning before we ever started the service. I mean, it was powerful stuff going on. Why? You guys, a, a verse or a song got you, and you were caught up in, in thanksgiving for the blood of Jesus. And the more we began to sing about the blood of Jesus, the more God's presence fell. Did you all notice that today? Amen. That's what happened. Mm. So in worship, that can happen. You know where else God can speak to us at? Sometimes it's just what people say to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I woke up this morning, you were on my heart. Here's a scripture God gave me for you. Can God do that? Yes. Yes, he does. Okay? Now, wait a minute. We are debunking the theory that God does not speak to us. Because he does. The scripture says, Jesus says, I speak to you. Okay. Verse 27. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. 
I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. Get that verse down on the inside of you. If you are one of these that say, I don't think God speaks to me, get John 10, 27 down in your heart. The sheep that are my own, hear my voice. You are hearing. You say, well, I don't think I do. Sometimes we have intentionally blocked God's mm, voice. That's true. That's How can true. we do that? We can do it with attitude. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. We can do it with, no, mm -mm. God doesn't speak to me. He speaks to everybody else, just doesn't speak to me. Whoa, well, that's right there saying, no, I'm not going to have my ears ready. Right. You know, when you're disciplining a small child, you know, I've got some small grandkids. And uh, I was with staying with one this week, and so cute. And um, he was doing this and this and this, and he knew he wasn't supposed to be doing this and this and this. I won't say what he was doing. But from three rooms away, his mother yelled, you know you're not supposed to do that. He went right on doing it. She moved closer. Did you hear me? Stop it. He did it again. Now, guys, that's our human nature. And then she said, there will be consequences if you don't Stop it now. Right. He stopped. <laughs> he stopped. He turned around. He just started doing something totally different. Because he suddenly realized, yeah, he had hurt her. He had hurt her every single time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So in our human nature, a lot of times we say, oh, God hasn't told me to correct that. He probably has. <laughs> but in our own human nature and our stubbornness, we are just going along going, oh, I just wonder how long I can get by with this until God corrects me. That's right? right? That's that's what little three and four-year-olds do. Five-year-olds, six-year-olds, they do that. You know what? We don't do it. We, we know something's wrong, an attitude, a behavior, mm -hmm. a thought process, um, something that we've done. We know that that's wrong. We feel in our heart, eh, I need to deal with that. I need to forgive. Mm -hmm. We did that song, Holy Water, today, which I just love. Because it's all about forgiveness, mm -hmm. okay? When we accept the forgiveness, we say, okay, God, forgive me for that. I, I don't, I don't want to do it again. But an attitude of a small child, so I think I have six grandkids under the age of eight. Yes. And another one on the way. So I'm around a lot of little guys right now. And you know what the little guys do? They push the boundaries. Yes, that's right. That's right. They push the boundaries. You know what we as Christians do? We push the boundaries. Sure do. We do. Oh, God, no, that's not your... Oh, did I hear God say that was a bad attitude? No, I didn't hear that. No, because he doesn't speak to me. No. <laughs> right? We deny that the Lord speaks to us because we find it easier to get along in our day if we don't have to correct something that's true. right that's true. yeah now this thing that happened the other day with one of my grandsons didn't happen one time i was there stayed with him six days huh. he did he pushed the boundaries different right. times yeah he pushed it several times but the tone of voice even if mama wasn't in the room he knew uh -huh. he knew mm -hmm. i won't call out his name but i will tell you that he really is a very well-behaved little guy, but he's pushing the boundaries. Yes. Guys, we push the boundaries all the time. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to get by with this unforgiveness in my heart. I'm just, I'm, it'll be fine. Nobody's going to know. Nobody will be able to tell that I have unforgiveness in my heart. Nobody will be able to tell that I need to, you know, have a come to Jesus meeting with Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to go on doing what I want to do. Right? Get, well, guys, it shows. It shows. Mm -hmm. Right? So listen to what Jesus says in John 10, 27. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. Mm -hmm. Guys, <laughs> this is who God wants us to be. Sheep that hear, uh -huh. sheep that listen, sheep that know, and yeah. sheep that follow. Follows. Right? Amen. There's an old song coming by mine right now. Mm -hmm. I have decided... To follow Jesus, right? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided 
to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. This is a season, not only on Sunday morning, but on Wednesday night, where God is talking to us about answering his call. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did Samuel have to do? Samuel realized after a while, yes. third time, yeah. third time, I got to do something about this. Yes, so what does he do? He goes into Eli, you did call me. Yes, you did. <laughs> and Eli was smart enough to go, oh, that was God. Yeah. Go back, and if he calls you again, tell him, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. listening. We're going to probably do that song, Master's Calling, in a while. Because that Master's Calling song by Deborah Joy Winans is so good. Because it says, listen while you still can hear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Listen. Bow down while your knees still bend. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. I got like that. Yeah. Can't do that right this morning. <laughs> but I'm recovering nicely yes. from a knee replacement. Ooh, thank you, but that song is talking about listening, bow down, surrender. That's what it's about. Yes, Lord. Guys, God's got wonderful things in store for each of you on Facebook and each of us here. But we have to be the one that says, speak now, God. Right. I'm listening. That's right. Amen. That's right. We got to want to hear. And sometimes that's correction. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's correction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. A well-behaved young person does not grow up without being corrected. Yes. Right. Right. Or if they do, it shows as they are yes. an adult. That's true. I just thank God for my my kids and grandkids, but I thank God for the the mothers and fathers in each set who have learned to discipline their children. You ever been around a child that's never been disciplined? <laughs> they are out, out, out there. Right? A child that's always gotten his own way. A child that's always, no matter what he wanted, he got. You ever been around people yeah. like that? Yeah. Not good. No. A married one. Married one. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble. Okay, so here's the point. When we say, God, talk to me. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We hear. Yeah. My grandson the other day, he heard. He heard it. He just went right on like he didn't hear it. <laughs> so we pretend because we don't want to deal with it, right. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have an opportunity to be used of God? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, recently in Bible study, I said everybody has a call on their life. Yes. And somebody quoted this verse, and this is a true verse. Many are called, few are chosen. Yes. Okay. Many are called. Does that mean all are called? All are called to be disciples of God. Yes. All are called to do what God wants you to do for your life. Yes. Is that different than the person sitting beside you here in church? Yes, yes, probably. It probably is. Don't use it as an excuse. Many are called. Not all are called. Use it as a Lord, I want to be one of those that says me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My dad didn't have a choice when he was 18 years old and had a full ride scholarship to DePaul University in pre med. He wanted to be a doctor. He didn't have a choice because at 18, he was drafted. Mm. It was World War II. Mm. And he went to Germany. Six weeks into college, they jerked all those young men out. Six weeks in. Wow. Put them on a bus sent them to New Jersey, and then put them on a ship wow. and sent them to Germany. Wow. Was it his choice? No. No. Was he glad that he could serve his country? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did he almost die several <coughs> times? Yeah. 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 In a haystack hiding from Germans in a big field, crying out to God, knowing, memorized Psalm 27. Yeah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And he is speaking that. And in that haystack, whispering it to God, saying, if you can, if you will save my life, save my life. Everybody around. Gunshots everywhere. 
this call to the ministry. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. I want you to save my life. This is how he told it. But I don't want to go into the ministry. I want to be a doctor. Like I told you, I wanted to be. Oh, no, no, no. I'm calling you right now for my service. Later, as he would talk about that day and how it changed his life, he would say, I, never, I would rather be nothing else than what God wanted me to be. Of course. It took a come to Jesus moment for my yeah. dad. Yeah. In a haystack, yeah. hiding from the German rifles all around. Woo. Praise God. But he did. In that haystack, as he told it, he's hearing me now, probably. He said, Okay. Yeah. Here am I. Here am I. Use me. I'm yours. Use me. Mm -hmm. Why don't we say that? We're afraid. We're afraid. Why don't we say, God, what do you want me doing today? Is there a person I need to speak to? Is there a card I need to send? Is there a phone call I need to make? What does he want me to do? We don't have to get hung up, guys, on a calling. Right. That's right. That's right. Ministry calling. Right. I will agree with this. Few are called to the ministry. Yeah. Right? Few are called. And I'll tell you why. Because there's everybody that's got to do everything else in this life. We have to have doctors and nurses and the healthcare workers and everything else. And God uses us in no matter what place that he's where right. you're at. Right. right? Right. We don't need 15 pastors. Right? Right. In one congregation. Right. Although some of the great big churches have a lot of them, I'll tell you. And that's okay. But see, my point is simply this. God has a purpose for your life. Yeah, Go with me to Isaiah 43 while I wrap this up. Isaiah 43. Let's go there. I want to read a couple verses, and then we're going to talk a lot more about this on the radio today. Because Samuel had a choice. He could have, after the third, you know, it's all this. Samuel, Samuel. When Eli said, oh, no, that was God, Samuel could have said, oh, well, I don't, I don't, I'm afraid of that. But no, why? Samuel had been sleeping every night in the presence of the Lord, the Ark of Covenant. He was in the same room with the presence of the Lord. Hannah had believed for him, yeah. and she got pregnant and had him. Don't you think he had a lot of God in him at a very young oh, yeah. age? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And so he knew. So look at Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord your creator says, O Jacob. And he who formed you, O Israel, here's for all of us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you from captivity. I have called you by name. You are mine. Thank you. Do you remember when Mary Magdalene, who was the first one to actually see the resurrected Jesus yes. in the garden? Yeah. Do you remember when she's like thinking this is some gardener? Do you remember that? <laughs> but when he calls her by, by her name, name, what happened? She, knew. she fell on her feet, she on knew. her on her knees. She fell on the ground. Oh, my Lord and my God, because he called her by name. name. Yeah. And it says right here, I have called you by name. You are mine. We just read in John chapter 10. He knows your name. He knows everything there is about you. He knows all the little things that make you who you are. And they know you. And he still loves you. And we know his voice. Yes. yes. She knows his voice. Now, sometimes we need confirmations from God about something. So it's fine. Sometimes I do. I just say, Lord. I'll tell you one this week that was great. So I, I'm driving and I, I'm, I'm praying about the sermon for the Sunday. And I'm feeling this is the way it's go. But I said, Lord, I just need a confirmation. So the next morning I get up and I, you know, I was worn out still from all the drive. But I opened my Smith Wigglesworth devotional <laughs> to that day. And the scripture for that day was Isaiah. Hear my Lord, send me. <laughs> okay, Lord, thank you for that confirmation. Yes. That's what we need to hear. Yes. 
So what God wants from us is an act of our will. If you take notes, write it down. He wants an act of our will. Lord, here am I. Here I am. I'm right here. I hear you. Lord, I hear you. Send me. That's what my dad did in that haystack in Germany in 1946 or 7. I don't know. No, 44 or 45, I guess. That's right. Early 40s. I don't know what year it was, but some, because I was, yeah, no, whatever that was. In that haystack, he said, okay, God, I surrender. Mm -hmm. Terry McCallman has that wonderful song in that new, ser that new uh, CD out, I Surrender All. The old song, yeah, I yeah. Surrender All, when he does it, plays his trumpet, oh my gosh, guys, it's just amazing. And it's just a reminder that God is saying to us today through this, how do we practice his presence? We get involved by saying, God, here am I. Use me. Amen. Talk to me. Teach me. Speak to my heart. Yes. There's something I need to hear. I want to hear it. Verse 2 of Isaiah 43. We're going to wrap this up in a minute. When you pass through the waters, not if. When. Not if. When. Are we going to pass through some hard times? Yes. yes. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That's a promise you can take to the bank. Thank you, Jesus. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. Through the hard times, guys, it's not going to overwhelm you. Amen. I right. claim that That's promise right. if I were you and you're going to have a rough day. Lord, you said, Isaiah 43, 2, when I pass through the waters, you're with me. And when I go through the rivers, they're not going to overwhelm me. And when I walk through fire, I will not be scorched. Nor will the flame burn me. Hallelujah. For why? For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Verse 4. Close with verse 4. Isaiah 43, 4. Because why? Why can we claim these promises? Because you are precious. In my sight. In my sight. Hallelujah. Amen. 27 years ago today, I held in my arms my first grandchild. It had been a very long ordeal for my daughter-in-law, Elizabeth, to develop, to deliver her. Long time. But they finally called us in, and the grandparents got to go in first to the room to see the baby. And there she was. And she was absolutely gorgeous, and she still is. But she had, even at that point, the most beautiful, what I like to call salt water blue eyes uh -huh. I had ever seen. She still has them and so do her three kids. They have those beautiful blue eyes. I remember holding her in my arms, talking to her, telling her how precious she was. Yes. That she was the gift of God. And she looked up at me with those little eyes and she was only, well, not even an hour old by the time we got in there to the living room. It was, I mean, she was just born. And they were, we were taking turns holding her. And I remember looking at her and just telling her, she was so precious. She still is precious. Even though there's been many come after her. <laughs> she is still precious. And you know what? God looks at you right now. Because you are precious in my sight. You know how beautiful you are? You know why a lot of people don't answer the call of God in their life? It's because they don't feel they're worthy, worthy and they don't feel they're good enough. They don't feel they're precious. Guys, because you are precious in my sight, you're honored and I love you. I will give other men in return for you and other people in exchange for your life. Verse 5, do not fear for I am with you. Amen. 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 That's right. Why can you confidently say, Lord, here am I? Because he's with you. Amen. He's not going to leave you. Got a job for you to do? You're going to do it. Yeah. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. Verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even who I have made. Guess what? He made you. Yeah, he, did. he knows everything there is to know about yes, you. Yes, thank you. He formed you. You're precious. You're special. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's the step to hearing from God that you need to do. Because it's not just going to happen. 
or suddenly you wake up one morning and well, it might. You can hear things. I guess I better retreat that. You can. You can hear from God even when you're not saved. But I tell you, when you are saved, when you are saved and you know you belong to God and that if you died tonight, tomorrow, you would be in heaven. Wow. That just takes all the guesswork out of what's going to happen to me. And blah, 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 blah. Because if you belong to God, you're precious in his sight. He's already redeemed you. All he's asking of you is, Lord, speak now. Here I am. I want to be yours. That's all. You accept it. Accept the free gift of salvation. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray it phrase by phrase. Pastor Jim will repeat after me. And if you are not sure of your salvation, repeat this prayer. Because we never know. One day we'll be called to heaven. And we want you to be there with us. It could be soon. Dear Lord, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus went to the cross for my sins and my sicknesses. I believe that Jesus went to the cross for my sins and my sicknesses. I ask you now, Lord, to forgive me. I ask you now, Lord, to forgive me. For anything and everything. For anything and everything. That I've ever said or done. That I've ever said or done. That was not pleasing to you. That was not pleasing to you. I invite you to come and live in my heart. I invite you to come and live in my heart. I want to be your child and so I am. I want to be your child and so I am. It's a decision I am now making. It's a decision I am now making. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, Lord. So I thank you, Lord. For the free gift of salvation. For the free gift of salvation. And I begin anew right now. And I begin anew right now. My life as I spend time with you. My life as I spend time with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This I pray. This I pray. In all sincerity. In all sincerity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So if you prayed that prayer, or if you just want to contact us, the easiest way is prayers. It's an email address. Prayers at bohmglobal. BOHM stands for Beacon of Hope Ministries. Prayers at BOHMglobal.com. And um, we will be happy. Betty or Pastor Jim will get right back to you right away and uh, contact you and give you some guidance. We always encourage people to start reading the book of John in the New Testament. It will change your life and bless you completely. So we're glad you joined us today. This is Pastor Marcia and the Beaconites. We have a Sunday afternoon radio show. Go to YouTube, open it up, and put in this. Very easy. Tan Talk Radio slash live. Tan, like getting a tan. Tan Talk Radio slash live. And uh, we, we have a two-hour show today, as we always do, 3 o'clock to 5 p.m. It's on Facebook. The ad will be on. I'll put it on this afternoon. So God bless you, and we hope to see you again next Sunday. Share this. Go to our YouTube channel, capital B-O-H-M, all caps. Space Global. Check out all the sermons and Bible studies there. God bless you. See you next week.